And so you can see here that um, having a legal will or trust kind of bridges that gap to give your home, your car, your possessions, your children, your heirs, etc. Uh, who's going to raise them without dying, uh, having a will, which is called dying intestate, without a will, then um, you just don't know what's going to happen with those. And so I'm going to share a couple of horror stories. Uh, sometimes that wakes us up. Some of us are motivated by uh, positive things of what it can do for us, and others are motivated by by fear. So let's, let's uh, read a couple of stories here. So Ken was a 75-year-old widower. He had told several persons that he wished to leave his estate to his cousin and to an elderly neighbor with whom he enjoyed hours of companionship, but he made no written will. Eventually, the cousin received one-third of his estate, and the balance went to relatives who lived far away and had he had never known. His neighbor received nothing. Okay, So he wanted his possessions and property to go a certain place, and that did not happen because he had no will. Um, Another one with minor children. Tim Smith was killed in a snowmobile accident in January. His wife, Mary, was killed in a car accident the following April. They had verbally asked a brother and his wife to raise their two-year-old daughter, Tara, but they didn't write a will. Now Mary's parents want custody of Tara as well. The case is in court. Okay. One of the main reasons we need a will, especially if you have minor children, is to declare a guardian. If you don't declare a guardian, Lots of people in your family might want to raise your child or think they can do a better job. And because of that, there's going to be fighting and arguing and conflict. And that's not what you want to leave. And that's not a, something that people want to experience when they're supposed to be mourning your loss and wanting the best uh, for, for your children. So definitely, definitely, if you have any minor children and don't have a will, um, that is a big scary disservice that you're doing to them. You definitely need that in there. Otherwise, conflict, rage, and and uh, fights will happen. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's look at another one here. <clears throat> so Marion has a favorite charity and close personal friend that she wishes to share in her estate. She must make a written will. The New Mexico law provides for the distribution of her estate only to her relatives. She hasn't seen her nieces and nephews in 15 years, yet they would get it all. So again, somebody that doesn't, um, doesn't have it. Um, a factor often overlooked is that without a will, a person cannot state <clears throat> when the heirs shall receive their inheritance. For example, Nathan, 18, fell heir to a large sum of money and blew it within a year. With a will, his father could have provided in a testamentary trust that a percentage of his estate passed to Nathan at different ages, maybe some at age 21, some more at age 25, and the remainder at age 30. This would have allowed time for Nathan to mature and gain wiser financial judgment. You, you definitely want to ask if money getting passed on is going to be a blessing or a curse. And um, if you don't state when and who and how much, then as soon as the, even if you have uh, a will and, and, and it says it goes to these children, well, as soon as they get 18, they get it all. And that could be a curse rather than a blessing. The last one, and uh, maybe you can think of if, if you know, stories that you've heard of or, or known of with estate planning, is by George. It says, I have a friend whose father had remarried years after his first wife had passed away. The father had just retired when he suddenly required hospitalization. A week later, he died. He had no will, and at the time in Massachusetts, where he lived, the default was that the current spouse got everything. The children were left with nothing. The new widow was nervous about having sufficient assets for the rest of her life, and so would not disclaim any of the inheritance. As a result, the widow and the children didn't speak to each other for years. So hopefully this is not what you want to pass on or you don't want your parents to pass on to you and your siblings, um, though they may not want to discuss and talk about uh, wills and estate planning. It isn't just for the dead or, or for when they die, but it's 
the people that die. It's for the people that are still living, right? It's it's that you want peace and harmony, not conflict all over the place. So uh, I'm sure you guys have have horror stories as well. But let's look at these questions. If you were to die tomorrow, who would get my property? Who would care for my minor children? Or uh, parents that are in need of help? What, ha what happened to my spouse? If you have a family business, would that continue? Will the estate be settled properly? What about taxes, fees, etc.? And so um, if you want any input about who raises your minor children or who gets any of your treasured possessions, what they receive and when they receive it, you need a will. It's, uh, it's just plain and simple. If you don't have it, then the state decides. You don't want the state deciding. So what is estate planning? Estate planning is the process of determining the distribution of your assets upon your death. And it also covers the management of your personal affairs in the event of incapacity, which would be with the uh, power of attorney. So in other words, if you, you, if you have a will, you give what you have to whom you want, when you want, and the way you want. You also do it at the lowest possible cost. Other There's administrative costs, taxes, etc. So the lowest possible tax to yourself and loved ones. And you have instructions left to make medical and financial decisions if you're unable to do so, with, uh, which we'll talk about. Because family members, when they're under stress, don't always make the best decisions uh, for medical decisions or financial decisions for you. And so when you're you know, able to and have a good mind and sound mind to be able to make those decisions, you should be making those in conjunction with your family members of, of what your desires are and what they want so that um, they're not making these decisions during a stressful time. <clears throat> 